Hey everybody, Alex here, healthhacksreview.com. So this is a video of my scam series on infrared saunas. And uh, it's just a very short video, which I took this topic out of a couple of my longer-winded videos, you'll see, uh, where I've talked about this and mentioned this. But it's uh, a little bit of a scam um, regarding the warm-up times of saunas out there. And uh, what do I mean? Well, uh, as I shared in one of my other videos about the thermostat and how thermostats ultimately control infrared production, meaning when the infrared is coming out of the emitters and when or not. Again, there's a couple companies that are an exception to the way this sort of process works, but pretty much any brand, most brands will work this way, 98% of them. And so what do I mean? Well, we, we would think from a common sense standpoint that we might use the programmable control, set our thermostat, you know, to whatever we're comfortable with, 120, 130, 140 is some of the hotter ones, right? Okay, this is normal, right? This is common sense. Set the thermostat, right? This is what you think would be a good thing to do. Incorrect. This is not a good thing to do. So most people would get in that sauna after it hits the desired temperature, right? So here's the scam. The scam is that 98% of these saunas stop their infrared production shut off their emitters basically when the thermostat when the room when the ambient room temperature is what I'm saying reaches its desired temperature so ooh, I like 130 degrees and uh, I heard this sauna is very efficient at warming up ooh isn't that good it only warms up to 130 degrees in 20 minutes wow so much better than the competition so let me go in my sauna now that I set to 130 degrees and oh wow, this is so comfortable. It feels like 130 degrees in here. Well, guess what it is? And what what is also happening? Well, you're not getting any infrared exposure. Hmm. So you're so happy that it warmed up quickly. You go inside your infrared sauna thinking you're gonna get what? Infrared exposure while you're in your sauna. The reality of the situation is, is that nine times out of 10, as far as brands go, you're going to be going inside of that sauna at your, once it reached that desired temperature, and those emitters are going to shut off because the thermostat said, Ta da I reached 130 degrees. Time for me to shut off. Because why would, why would it want to shut off? Think about this logically. Why would it want to shut off those emitters? Well, because its job is to make sure it doesn't go above 130 degrees, if that's where you set the temperature, right? If it went above the 130 degree mark, then people would complain. They'd say, well, I set it for 120 and went to 140. I mean, what is the thermostat? doesn't even work. So how do you control the temperature in there? You have to, they're all rudimentary systems. You either shut off or they turn on. Just like your air conditioning unit. Just like your central heating, if you have that. What does it do, folks? And why does it work the same? Because... It's the same electrical system and principles. It's almost identical. Your heat, you're cooling your house, or you're heating your house, and it reaches 76 degrees, 80 degrees, wherever you're comfortable, right? Whatever it is, whatever the temperature is. Then what happens? Your central air, your central heating turns off. Sure, maybe you'll keep a fan on, may circulate fan or whatever. That's a, that's a unique difference. But the point is it's the same thing. It shuts off, right? What it doesn't do, think about it logically, in, in the heating example of your home or your air conditioning home, are you, are you familiar with any sort of units in homes that dial down the temperature? Like, oh, it reached the desired temperature. Now it's going to keep on, but it's going to just keep on ch reducing the temperature and stay on the whole time. No, it always shuts off. I don't know of any system that keeps on down-stepping the temperature and uh, and checking the the ambient air temperature and altering how much airflow and all these curves. Wow, wouldn't that be cool though? Yeah, I mean, if something like that existed that could constantly monitor and adjust the uh, all that kind of stuff, well, that does exist. There's one company that does that, Therasauna. Constantly is monitoring. It's adjusting the electric flow. Those emitters never turn off. Doesn't matter where you set the thermostat. Does not matter. Constantly putting out infrared. But this is the whole scam here. And so some companies you'll see on their websites, 
Um, they'll make the claim that the emitters stay on the whole time. Lies. They're lies. I mean, just ask them. Say, okay, um, could you explain to me? Um, don't even ask them about their their heaters. Well, don't ask them about their emitters staying on the whole time first. Try to get them into the trap of asking them, could you explain to me uh, how the thermostat works and um, what happens with the emitters, the infrared, uh, when the desired temperature is reached? And you'll get some very interesting information. They may even continue to lie to you and say, oh, it stays on the whole time. Well, just ask them how. <laughs> how does it stay on the whole time? Explain that one to me. When the emitters, don't, don't you know, explain to me, you know, your thermostat system, you know, and uh, prove it to me, you know, that they stay on the whole time. So, and that doesn't exist, by the way, it doesn't exist. So, some companies on their websites will claim that their emitters stay on the whole time, but if you read their content carefully, and sometimes you have to craft the right question with salespeople around what they stated, but you'll basically then infer and understand that their emitters will stay on for the majority of the time that most people on average are staying in the sauna. So most people on average do 15 minute to 40 minute on the longest end sauna sessions, okay? And so, yes, some of these saunas, you can get the emitters to stay on producing infrared the whole time if, this is the secret, if you set the thermostat at its highest temperature. Clearlight admits and, and recommends this process step, okay? And uh, some other sauna companies don't even recommend that at all, uh, and then some do. Um, so what are they really saying? They're saying that, if you set it on its highest temperature, in general, it's going to take third, tw 20 to 40 minutes, sometimes an hour, in some of the, the really poor efficiency saunas, um, to actually reach your desired temperature if it's at the highest temperature. So it's still going to be climbing, 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 climbing. And what they're recommending is that if you're, is that for the average sauna time session of 15 to 40 minutes, there's a good chance that if you set its highest temperature, it's going to still be trying to reach that temperature. So, meaning, it's not even going to be at that temperature, your max setting, when you go in there, unless you waited. Unless you waited to go in until it hit that max temperature, then that, that guidance or that advice would not be good advice, which they should really say in their marketing content. They should say that, set it to its max temperature and get in within 10 minutes. Because then maybe the majority of the time it'll be it'll still be climbing to its desired temperature. If you set at the max setting, however, and went in at once it reached that temperature, it's going to shut off within a few minutes or immediately, or it already shut off by the time you open the door. So actually, it's bad advice. They really should add that piece into their marketing content if they're listening. Uh, that they should recommend you go in within ten minutes. Because if you go in once it's reached its max temperature, thermostat's just going to say, hey, I've reached the max temperature. Time to shut off the emitters. Now, realistically, what then most of these brands do, their emitters, is you'll have some lack of infrared for some period of time. Depends on how well insulated it is. It depends on a few different factors. It could, you, you could be going without infrared exposure for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It depends. It depends, but normally you can hear it click on and off, and uh, that's a sign. You'll hear it clicking or cracking or something like that. Some of the companies have found a way to prevent that those sounds, so you can't tell that it's shutting on and off. <laughs> and um, they'll actually comment on that that if you hear cr cricking and cracking, that means all right, there are other companies' emitters are shutting off and on, right? Well, it's because they learned how to get their systems not to do that but they're still fundamentally electrically on the same on off switch and thermostat control they're still going to shut off so it's a little deceptive of course and that's why it goes into the scam series if you have any more questions about this um, just keep in mind that uh, again only like a couple companies that are an exception to this rule and I still many times will recommend and sell 
a lot of these other brands that do shut off once they reach their desired temperature. And at least I guide people correctly um, that set it to the max temperature and go in as soon as you can, within five minutes. Don't get so hung up on it being hot in there. You know, deal with it. Just go in when it's warm. It's lu lu lukewarm because you're still going to be getting infrared and you bought the sauna to get infrared exposure. So go in and get infrared exposure. You're still going to get 90% of the benefits because you're getting the infrared exposure. The whole thing about sweating, sweating is good for you. And yeah, it's a great part of infrared, you know, therapy. But you only sweat out a small percentage of the toxins and all that kind of stuff versus what your main elimination organs are going to process internally, okay? Your lymphatic system, your blood system, where it's going to run those toxins, which infrared helps release and mobilize and also helps to the organs work better with all that elimination. But just keep in mind, it's a small percentage. So people get very hung up on, well, if I go in immediately, it's going to take a while for me to sweat. And, you know, don't get so hung up on the sweating. Sweating is good and you will probably still sweat. But um, here's another angle to think about that if you do go in within five minutes or within ten, like very soon in, um, and if you have the time, it's actually also still better, even if it's just a little bit warm in there, because as you're getting that infrared exposure early on, that infrared is going to be going into your body and already starting to work on your metabolism, already starting to work on warming your core body temperature. So really, to get the best sweat and to mobilize as much toxins, you want as much infrared exposure as possible. It's it's better than waiting till it reaches a hotter temperature, and then and then having it you know, you sweat yes very rapidly that way, but then the emitter shut off. The whole goal is how much infrared can you exposure can you get? That's how you got to think about it. That's why infrared mats and infrared pads are so good, um, or so useful, practical, functional, I guess you could say, um, because they're easy to get a lot of infrared exposure basically to your body. Um, because you can do, you can multitask basically, you can take a nap on them, you can put them behind your chair, in your office chair, you can sit on the couch, instead of just sitting on the couch, sit on the couch while you're sitting or laying on an infrared mat or pad. So it's very easy to rack up 20, 30 hours or more, if you sleep on all night, of infrared exposure. Um, so people get good results with it for that reason. Um, true, most people don't sweat on infrared pads and mats. You can. Uh, if you sit on them long enough, or there's other sorts of protocols you can ask me about. But again, 90 plus per percent of the infrared health benefits are not necessarily about sweating, okay? They still greatly mobilize toxins. Most of those toxins will be going through your main elimination organs, your lymphatic system, your kidneys, your liver, your colon. They'll still be going through those pathways, okay? That's what it's all about. And then there's also a million, a myriad of other health benefits as well, besides the mobilization, the detoxification, which a lot of people aren't familiar with, which is the bulk of giving you so many other health benefits. Detoxification, mobilization is actually a smaller, just a smaller portion of one of the benefits. There's many other benefits as well you should familiarize yourself with. So anyways, thanks for watching.